now they're all set for the gold rush of the Salt Lake Ice Center in short track speed skating on Eurosport. Yes, welcome Die to the Salt Lake Ice Center. Center. It's time Premier. for short track. No Chinese athlete has won a gold at Winter Olympics, but here at the Salt Lake Ice Center, that might well change. They have two major competitors going in the women's 1500 meters. We'll also show you a real drama in the relay. This is Yang Yang S, one of the two Yang Yangs. She's the better of the two in sprint. She's a triple silver medalist at Nagano. But Yang Yang A has won overall gold at the last five world championships, and she's also a silver medalist at Nagano. If we pick it up at the start of the first well, of five heats. Run time around is 111 meters, so 1500 meters is and we have and a half laps. Yvonne Kunz from Germany, Yang Yang S from China, Joanna Williams from Isleworth. She goes for Great Britain, Amy Peterson of the States, Alana Krauss from Canada, and Christy Wren from Hong Kong. Favorite here in start position two, Yang Yang S. Joanna Williams will be in three. Simon Reed alongside Chris Howarth to take you through this. Big moment for Joanna, Simon. She's had a great season. There she is, right in the middle. Finished eighth in the World Cup this year. Fantastic result. So, comes on the inside. Yang next to her, then Williams, then Peterson, Kraus, and Christie. First three qualify. Amy Peterson, who carried the flag for the USA, competing in her fifth Olympics, who leads them out. Well, nobody really wanting to take up the running here. It's Joanna coming through. She's just 20 years old from the Aldrich Club in Guildford, where all the major competitors are. It's a date paced to Williams leading at the moment. Alana Krauss in second. In fact, it's Kunz that's uh, come out in front again, just ahead of Joanna. But, uh, the lead keeps changing with nine laps to go. Yang Yang, biding her time at the moment. The helmet, one, two, three, at the back. The Canadian leading, Alana Kraus. Yang Yang making her move. Here's this decisive move, maybe, with seven laps to go. Yang Yang taking it up now. Joanna's got to watch it. She could get herself boxed in here. All the fast skaters in front of her, and the pace just starting to hot up. Good move from her with five laps to go. R trying to get round the outside, but the door's been closed. Still... At the back, Yang Yang leading again. Joanna Williams makes a move, moves up into fourth place. Remember, the first three qualify for the semi-finals. Still, it's Yang Yang deciding to dominate from the front. Klaus in second place. Peterson still in there. And Joanna Williams doing all she can in fourth. But just being pushed away now with two laps to go. She's, what, two, three metres behind. Yang Yang leads. Kraus second, then Peterson. It looks like those three are going to qualify. It looks bad for Joanna Williams, but that's the way it finishes. Yang Yang qualifies in first place. Kraus in second. And in third, it's Amy Peterson. Game effort from Joanna Williams, but it didn't quite happen but it was a tough heat. It certainly was. A lot of contact in there. Remember, this is a non-contact sport, and uh, the three experienced skaters out in front there really shut the door firmly on Joanna. But she didn't stop trying, did she? Here you can see Yang Yang making her move round the outside. 
She's got such a great turn of speed, looks so relaxed. Within two strides, she can get five or six meters up on the other skaters. And uh, that's how it finished. Nowhere for Folks, Joanna again, this is a to get through. Track. There are actually five different tracks. Speed, set up. very much her thing. It's probably hard to see from up in the stands, but there's different colored, different colored dots on the ice representing the different tracks. So that's uh, 111 meters. A bit of pill they to swallow for the UK supporters. To give the skaters the smoothest, best but ice surface to she skate She wasn't on. lucky in the uh, draw and had to take her chance. Just misses out. So we move on to heat number two. There are five heats. to make a smooth surface for our skaters. Imagine the track and in this heat we've got uh, the Russian, Natalia Dmitrieva, the Romanian, 30, Katalin Christo, so from Germany, Christian Pribst, from meters. Hungary, Eva Again, Farkas, and uh, the Italian, Marazzini. There she is. Member of the national Folks, team the since 95-96. Particularly the strong is Zini in the uh, 500 and the 1,000. This is the first time we've ever skated the 1,500 meter. And later on tonight, you're going to see the gold medal, silver medal, and bronze medal presentation in this event for the ladies, 1,500 meters. That's confirmation of uh, Yang Yang S's victory. Quiet at the start of the race, please. Alana Kraus, second, Amy Peterson, third. World record for this, 221.844 from Kim Moon Young in Montreal some three years ago. So it's Dimitreva on the inside, then Katalin Christo for Romania, then Kristin Pripps from Germany, Eva Farkas from Hungary, Mara Zini from Italy, and Ko Gyo Hyun from Korea. And again, a pretty sedate start, it's the Italian taking them out, Mara Zini taking the lead. Eva Farkas now for Hungary. Farkas from Hungary, Katalin Christo from Romania, the lead changing all the time. It's amazing how this uh, speed is starting to hot up quite quickly in this race as uh, Dimitreva for Russia, it is out in front, but nobody really wanted to go with her. So Dimitreva for Russia, the Romanian Christo, it looks like the Italian, Marazzini in third place. Favorite for this, Go Hikyun from Korea. Taking your time. No rush here. No, it's all about tactics, getting yourself in the right position and uh, keeping aware of what's going on behind you if you're out in front. Because you had a go at short track. I did. I didn't skate anything like this, I can tell you. It wasn't a pretty sight, but it was great fun. But tactics are everything. They really are. It's a very tactical game. Hence the lack of speed at the beginning. They're all playing and trying to get one up over on one another. But uh, Zini in second spot there, just responding to everything from behind her and still keeping one eye on the Russian in front, Natalia Dimitreva. Still no move at all from the Korean in fourth place. Now she makes a move. Look at that from fourth to first. Go Ki Hyun decimates the field in what five or six strides. So the Korean takes the lead. Go Ki Hyun. Then it's the Italian, Marazzini. The Russian in third place, Natalia Dimitreva. In fact, I think it's a German in third place. Yes, it is indeed. It's Christian Pribst in third, but no doubt about the leader here. Go Ki Kyun crosses the line comfortably in first place. Marazzini in second, and it was Christian Pribst of Germany in third. And that was uh, a pretty devastating turn of speed that she showed there. 
Well, that's when the tactics came into play because Zini made a move around the outside and it just opened up a gap on the inside and Ko was able to make a way through right against the blocks. Fantastic turn of speed and uh, so quick to respond when she saw the opening. And it's all about patience, isn't it, in big races like this? Knowing that your time may come and having the guts to go for it when it comes. You can see there only a sliver of an opening, yeah. but she took it. <laughs> Made it look so easy. Just look at the angles. And of course, the speed skaters, they've got the, the blade on the left foot is really offset to the outside, which enables them to get right over on that outside edge. If you watch as she goes around here, look, she drops over, holding on the, in, uh, the inside of the right foot. But that left foot, if the blade wasn't offset, the boot would hit the ice and uh, you wouldn't get any grip at all. And I can tell you, when I was skating, I couldn't even find the outside edge. I couldn't get my ankle over far enough. We'll see how many times it gets speed here tonight. The world record in this event is 2 minutes, 21.844 seconds. That record has existed for three We're just years. reflecting on uh, Joanna's we'll race. You know, that was a quick time. And, uh, in fact, an Olympic and record time. Yes, 2.26.943, the existing Olympic record. Some five seconds behind the world record. Those of you who have a chance to see that long may well go skating out at the later old. on. You notice there's a few things different here in short track speed skating. One of the One uh, key competitors four to, six to come, Choi Eun Kyung, in, race. Choi Eun -kyung yeah, in the next heat, alongside Yang Yang A. So the, the conflict between the two of them should be pretty good. 2.26.980 there. That very nearly broke the Olympic record. So Ko goes in first, Marazzini second, Christian Pripst in third. We'll be back. Remember the last time you sprinted up 25 flights of stairs? Then lay on your stomach and threaded five needles in a row without missing a beat. Thought not. The Olympic Cross Country and Women's Combined Pursuit, Friday night at 8 on British Eurosport, an official Olympic broadcaster. British Eurosport at the Winter Olympics, right round the clock. And at Eurosport.co.uk, Team GB and Salt Lake City are just a click away. With the latest word from inside the British camp, for the views of the athletes, their coaches, and the team and performance directors, all the personalities and the medal chances for a whole new angle on the greatest winter sport gathering on earth. Salt Lake City 24-7 on Eurosport.co.uk. The snow. 1,500 meters, third heat, number three qualifying. Chao Ung Kyung of Korea on the inside. She's in 170 with helmet number 122 is Yang Yang from China. Yang Yang A, that is. Overall gold medalist at the last five world championships. So it should be between those two. But again, a fairly comfortable pace early on. The other skater to keep your eye on is uh, Radonova from Bulgaria. She's ranked number three in the World Cup at this distance, behind the uh, two Chinese stars. So more than capable of keeping her own. Radonova in uh, fourth place at the moment. Erin Porter, it is out in front with uh, Yuka Camino just making a move now and now she takes up the running. In fact, Kyung and Yang in the next heat. And it is Porter, the uh, Olympian from 98. Oh! oh. Now uh, she looks around for help. But there'll be none. So that's Camino out of it. The question is, will there be any penalties there? She's up, back on her feet, just in case anybody in that pack of four there gets disqualified. So the possession there with Rudden over in third place, and now the pace starting to hot up. 
Novotna trying to make her move on the inside. But Porter being passed now. And that's Radden over out in front. She is so strong. So Radanova takes the lead and looks pretty comfortable with three laps to go. Made a move now and can sit on that lead. I'll tell you what, the Russian made a move there with a couple of laps to go up in a second spot. Nina at Viva and third at Katerina Novotna. Those three are going to qualify without any problems. And they can relax now rather than take it out on each other. So it's Radanova who qualifies in first place. Tiva in second and Novotna in third. Well, that clash uh, involving Yuka Kamino. Interesting to see that again. There's the uh, the winner. She really is in such great form. So strong. Twice European champion. Seven nice hand, folks, for Evgenia Radanova. And you can see the speed that she had, unofficial world record holder over 500 meters. But the three of them qualified pretty easily in the end. Well, Nina, Evtiva impressed me. She had a great turn of speed. There you can see Erin Porter. Now she's going to get disqualified for that. Yes, no wonder she looked round. There was literally nothing that uh, Camino could do there. Escape was taken away from underneath it. Just, there we go. Absolutely no way that uh, Camino could control that. So the call is impeding, and Erin uh, Porter is out. The crowd don't like that. No, but it was uh, unintentional, but definitely there. It certainly was. As I said before, there's no contact in this. And it's mighty tough. There's not a lot of room out there when he's skating around a, a rink. The track's just 111 meters long. And those corners come up mighty quickly. So that's really unlucky for Camino. She has no court of appeal here. She's out of it. Yep, she certainly is. So, to heat number four. Choi, then one of the favourites on the inside. Then Nagi from Hungary, Mary Eve Drole from Canada, Yang Yang A from China, and Georgieva from Bulgaria. And it's the Canadian Drole who goes out in front, but only because the others are letting her do so. See the total concentration, total awareness of everything going on around her. Yang Yang back in fourth place, just behind the Korean. Marianne taking up the running with uh, Drole in behind her and uh, Choi for Korea in third, just uh, keeping her wits about her. So, those are the ones to watch. Choi in third place, the world record holder. And gold medalist at the uh, Calgary World Cup in the 3,000. Remember, as a world record holder at this distance for Korea at 1,500. And, uh, Kim Moon Yong. But still, it's Nagi who leads at the moment. Drole second, then Choi, then Yang, and then it's Georgieva. Well, Yang Yang so often sticks at the back there, waits for somebody to make a move, and then makes a counter move. She is so experienced. A great turn of speed, and then you see her looking up for a way through around the outside up into third place. Choi has also made her move, so it's now Korea from Canada, from China. Choi first. Drole second. And it looks like those three are going to be okay. Georgieva keeping in contact for Bulgaria, but it's going to be very tough for her. Now they're going to fight it out with four laps to go. This will be interesting. Choi leading. Yang Yang moves into second place. Drole third. 
No need for them to get too excited now. Yeah, they've done the work now. They've pulled away. They're safe. And uh, there'll be no fighting as they go into the final lap. One lap to go. And Choi perhaps just making a point here. Little injection of speed. She coasts on it. And she wins pretty comfortably. Yang in second. And Drole third. Yes, it was an impressive skate from Choi there. Coming into this, I had uh, Yang Yang marked as uh, the hot, hot favourite, but she didn't look as impressive as Choi, and that really seemed to take it out of her. Really struggling to get her breath. Conditioning so important in short track speed skating. You need to have that turn of speed, not when you're ready particularly, when the opportunity arises. And look at Yang Yang really working hard to find a way around the outside. Choi sensing that. Keeping the line now very quickly on the power coming out of that corner. Just making sure that Yang Yang has to work very, very hard indeed. And of course, the altitude factor here, we're some 4,000 feet above sea level here at the Salt Lake Ice Centre. Yeah, I'm getting worn out watching it. I don't know how they must be feeling. These are only the heats here, though. These ladies will go on to the semifinals and then the finals. So the first three qualifying there. And again, you will see the gold medal. And Choi the must be very happy with her move there. 2.29.46, so not a particularly so fast time. Yang Yang second. Meters. Marie Ove Drole third. Six skaters, and the other two the top three will advance to the semifinal round. miss out. George Eva and Naji. So to the final heat. And in this one we have Sarah Lindsay. Sarah Lindsay in uh, second position. Italian Katia Zini in lane one. Then Lindsay, then Stefan Bouvier from France, Shikage Tanaka of Japan, Yulia Pavlovich from Belarus, and Olga Danilov from Israel. Sarah Lindsay, just a fractional leader at the moment. The Italian on the outside. The Italian taking it up from Sarah Lindsay. Good support for Sarah, that's good to hear. British champion at all distances, the 21 years old Sarah from the Oldwich Club. Threatened to be a break there, but well covered. And she's getting well here, down into second place as uh, Bouvier makes a move. And Stefan Bouvier from France leading, still Lindsay in second place. Tanaka. The Japanese in third. He's competed in every world championship since 96, but has never got beyond the semi-finals in the individual events. Done well in relay. She makes her move now. But Sarah Lindsay still very much in touch. Bulgarian Pavlovich being dropped off at the back. Halfway in this final heat of the 1500 meters. Still, Tanaka in front. So, oh dear, contact that's, there. That's a shocker. And out goes Sarah Lindsay, and out go her hopes of a place in the semi-final. Well, it was difficult to see exactly what happened. Hope she's uh, okay. The Italian there, Zini, just uh, seems to be winded. Sarah, thankfully, is up and back on her feet, but uh, what a pity. She's had such a great season, 10th in the World Cup this year, and uh, any hopes down and out with that fall. So these three are going to come to play, qualify pretty comfortably. Tanaka leading Bouvier second for France, and uh, Daniloff from Israel must feel as if it's Christmas and birthday. <laughs> But that's a real present. She qualifies in third place. 
Pavlovic made a late effort the Belarus who looked uh, way out of it but she has to be content with fourth place but that was desperately unlucky for Sarah Lindsay she and Zini coming in to contact with each other and it's just a split second here and sometimes it's nothing to do with concentration you can just be unlucky really good to see that again because I don't honestly think there was very much that Sarah could have done about it here we see her in third place trying to close the door she senses in fact she lost her balance yes and uh, it's Sarah that ends up taking out Zini yes just looked like she lost her footing there and the Italian on the outside was really unlucky just got the weight a bit too far forwards on the heel of the skate and down she goes and once you start to lose your balance there's literally nothing you can do hard impact into the boards but the padding you see there the weight head went down and uh, nowhere for Zini to go except crashing into the boards with her and that split up the field so uh, that's confirmation of the situation there and that's a real blow for the Italian who was uh a former world record holder at 500 meters for call of confirmation that uh, Tanaka Bouvier and Danilov qualify for the semi-finals which we're going to see later in this program and there's confirmation of those that have qualified through Kung Drole Yang Yang A Evtieva Radonova Tanaka Danilov Bouvier Prebst but no Brits I'm afraid but will we see both those semi-finals right after this in the women's 1500 meters two will qualify there are three semi-finals two will qualify for the final later on Ko Gi Hyun from Korea in one Also, we have Genia Radanova from Bulgaria, Stephanie Bouvier from France, Christian Pribst from Germany, and Katerina Novotna for the Czech Republic. It's the Korean on the inside, and the French, then the Czech, the Bulgarian, and the German Pribst on the outside. So this will not be a fast time, you can be sure of that. Novotna making the early move. Tempted to make a break, I should think, but early days. Pripst in second, Bouvier third. Yeah, they won't let her get away with that. The German uh, very quick to respond and the rest of the field going with her. But uh, again, those careers, they like to stick at the back and just watch what's going on. Looking for a counter-attack. Koreans really have such a turn of speed. Ko just almost in control from the back, isn't it? They're obviously so wary of her. But there are two other qualifying places for the final left. It's not just about Ko, even though she was devastating in her heat. Just having a look on the outside here. Nothing too severe. But she has decided to take it up so it's Ko who leads from the Votner and now the move this is a bit more of a break now Radanova moving very very quickly and uh, good to see Bouvier trying to go with her and it, it is Bouvier ahead of Radanova now but, uh, Radanova has such a turn of speed and Ko knows that so it's the French at the moment. Here comes Ko on the outside. This, once more, she's hotting up the pace. Ko takes the lead with five laps to go, and maybe she's going to sit on this. I'm impressed with the response from Bouvier as Radanova looks for a way through round the outside again. But uh, Bouvier still hanging on in there. Radanova's fought a way through now. Ko leads Radanova second, Bouvier in third.
And the German trying to keep in contact, Christian Prips, but just can't keep up with the pace. They've opened a the gap of somewhat four or five metres, and it looks like these three are going to be OK with a lap and a half to go. Two laps to go. Into the final lap. Coe leads. Radanova in second. And it's Bouvier who qualifies in third place. Pribst misses out. Yes, in fact, uh, just the two qualifying. So B Bouvier misses out as well. But that was very impressive again from Cove. She does seem to control races effortlessly. Yeah, it doesn't panic. That's the important thing, as you were saying earlier, to keep your patience and wait for your moment. Look at that. Just amazing. The line there is phenomenal. Leaving nowhere for anybody to come through. Making Radanova work hard around the outside. Bouvier sensing the speed and power of Radanova. But uh, no way of stopping her. So a slow time, slower than uh, most of the heats. But when it mattered, the injection of pace was vital for Co. Radanova second and uh, Bouvier, yes, just missing out by under four tenths of a second. And will feel bereft. Also missing out Pripst in fourth place and uh, Katerina Novotna in fifth. Now to semi-final number two. And we have Choi there on the outside. The favourite here up against Yang Yang A. Amy Peterson. Amy Peterson in her fifth Olympics. Representing Japan, Chikage Tanaka. Representing Canada. Representing Canada. Tanaka, Marie Yves Drolet. To finish third in her heat, she's going to have to really struggle here. Yang Yang A. Gold medalist at the last five world championships. And uh, Choi Eun Kyung from Korea. Who beat Yang Yang S in her heat. And a quicker break here, and again the Korean at the back, but a more meaningful pace. So it's the Canadian Marie Yves Drolet who leads out. Peterson in second place. And it looks like Choi making her move, covered by Yang Yang A and Tanaka. Tanaka in second place. Yang Yang A there in third, and Drole in fourth. But Choi, at the moment, anxious to keep right up there rather than hold back. Well, once again, Choi responding to the response from Tanaka. Tanaka moved around the outside, and Choi saw the gap, got right up in front. Back down in third, but it, you don't sense it'll be very long. Tanaka now makes a move around the outside, the door being closed once more. The Americans and the Canadians working well, but Tanaka strong enough to find a way through. So, uh, Yang Yang, it is in second place. Tanaka leads the way. Choi back down in fourth. Strange tactics from Choi. Looked like she was going to control it near the front. Bork there. Still plenty of time. Hot pace, this one. Halfway through. Choi going to have to be content to hold back again. It's Drole who leads. Tanaka's right up there. Yang Yang in second place. I think Choi's tactics here are to keep out of trouble. There's an awful lot of uh, buffeting going on in those front three places at the moment. And uh, she's just biding her time and waiting for the opportune moment. So experienced. So Drole leads. Yang Yang 
makes her move. Yang Yang takes over now. Tanaka third. Choi back in four. She's going to have to go soon. Here she goes with a lap and a half to go. Choi making her move on the outside. Wow, look at that. That is just so impressive. Decimating the field. Just as she did in the heat. But here she's done that against a world-class short track skater. She's opened up a five-meter lead, and that was fantastic. And look at that, a world record. 2.21.08. A world record for Choi Un Kyung. And she's hardly breathing. Just amazing. Well, Yang Yang must be uh, devastated. She too got inside the existing world record of Kim's, Kim Myung Kyung's, but had to be content with second place. It wasn't just the world record, it's the way she did it. This was just devastating. Yeah, when you think they've been skating at that sort of pace for so long. Yang Yang makes a move up the inside there. Of uh, Drole. But uh, just look at the composure of Choi. Well, you sense that she was just keeping herself out of trouble. Look, two strides down the straight. And uh, already a metre in front. Yes, Yang Yang uh, just made that little sidestep to block her. But it, it was over. It was over in... It was never going to happen, was it? Yep. She was going so fast, and of course Yang Yang then was uh, risking getting disqualified. So fantastic tactics and just amazing maturity from Choi. Look at that. Both of them inside the old world record. And indeed, Drole in third place was also inside the world record, and she hasn't even qualified. <laughs> we know the conditions here are good. The ice is just fantastic. Of course, the ice will be a little bit harder for the uh, short track speed skating than it would be for the figure skating. So the third and final semi-final, the Tieva for Russia. Avtieva qualified in second place from her heat. And here's Yang Yang S. Won her heat comfortably. Triple silver medalist from Nagano. Alana Kraus from Canada. Finished second in her heat. Marazzini. And uh, Olga Danilov from Israel, perhaps a lucky semi-finalist. She'll really struggle here, one senses. So the favourite, obviously, Yang Yang S, lining up in the second from the inside. Since the Italian, Marazzini, who takes us away. Then it's Yang Yang. Then it's the Canadian, Alana Kraus. The Israeli at the back, Danilov in fourth place, now making a bit of a move, but uh, everyone very watchful of the others right now. Yang Yang, the uh, winner of the World Cup at this distance, beat Yang Yang A and Radanova. Although Radanova didn't compete in one of the events. But, uh, she really does have a turn of speed, and uh, if she makes it through into the final, what a fantastic recipe. They're up against Choi in the sort of form that she's in. Pretty sedate pace, in a marked contrast to the second semi final. Just as I say that, here comes Alana Kraus to inject some action into this. Yang, Yang very quick to cover it there. Good turn of speed from Evtiva around the outside. So it's Evtiva who leads. Kraus in second. Yang Yang third. Already the Israeli Danilov trading at the back. Zini in fourth. Number two qualifying here. 
And you sense that Zini really hasn't got the turn of speed to uh, to keep with this field. But uh, having said that, she's back up in contention again. But it does look a bit of a struggle. Kraus in first place then. Vefjeva second. Still no real move, but here comes one, it looks like, from Yang Yang on the outside. Kraus from Yang Yang. With three laps to go, Yang Yang takes it up, Kraus in second, Evtieva third, Zini fourth. Well, that was a fantastic move from Yang Yang, really dug deep, down in the knee, pushed hard, and got her nose ahead. And now there's no looking back, I don't think. At the bell, it's Yang Yang in first, Kraus second. Zini doing all she can, but it's not going to happen, nor for Evtieva, the first two look away and clear. And that's the way it finishes, they qualify. Kraus looking good. Just behind Yang Yang. Well, that was a physically demanding race. Although the time wasn't that quick, they were slow over the first three or four laps. But once they got going, it was uh, pretty tough. And of course, the altitude not helping at all. Alana Kraus, impressive, keeping with Yang Yang right to the bitter end. And uh, Evtieva from Russia with uh, a couple of laps to go, just out of contention. Once Yang Yang had made a move and the pace just quickened slightly, just unable to keep with it. So much courage going round the outside like that. The long route. And there was a, just a little bit of contact with her and Evtieva, but... Nothing of any significance. There she makes a move and she goes on to take the victory here and the qualification along with Kraus. But uh, for me, it's Choi who looks the pick of the semi-finalists. Well, she really is in uh, fantastic form. There's no doubt about that. And uh, I'm looking forward to the finals, that's for sure. So it's Yang Yang and Kraus who qualify from this third semi. And look now at the second semi final in the men's 5,000 meter relay. I'll tell you from the first semi, Canada and China qualified. In this semi, we have USA, Italy, Australia, and Korea. And no holding back here from the gun. They go straight away, and it's Korea who go out in the lead. Korea from Italy. USA third. Australia fourth. Four for each team. Teamwork and stamina are very much of the essence here. Good to see the Australians getting back in contention. Bit of a scrappy start from them, but uh, they're working hard and a good change and right back up in the field. So Korea leading, Italy second, the Americans third, and Australia back in it. Oh, dicey moment there, good change from the Italians, and uh, nearly pushed him straight into the back of the Korean. So although it's close at the moment, it's not that tactical. The Koreans will be very happy to be in front. Oh, it's a long, long way to go. Fabio Carter in second place for the Italians. If you've been watching the uh, speed skating throughout the week, you'll have seen his brother taking part in the uh, 500 metres, David Carter. Very talented family. Canada, the winners of this in Nagano. Korea got the silver, China got the bronze. And the Italians won at Lillehammer in 94. Koreans won in Alberville in 92, three times it's been in the Olympics as a medal sport. And it's completely different styles, the Koreans and the Italians. The uh, Koreans always seem to be very technical. The Italians have got a wonderful flair. 
flamboyant style as the Americans start to make a move up the inside. That was impressive stuff. And America now lead with Korea in second and Italy in third. And once again, the Australians caught on the hop. And listen to the roar from the crowd. Packed out here. Some 15,000 inside. Is America leading? Korea second, Italy third, Australia at the back. It's still a long, long way to go. And anything can happen. You can see the congestion there on the changes. It really is dangerous. The That's Americans thrilling the crowd now, leading the Koreans. This is totally unexpected, and the Koreans won't like this at all. Rusty Smith handing over there, a good change. The Italians back up into second. The Koreans just uh, not panicking. And Australia back in contention. That's good to see. Yes, the Australians have worked their way back in this and are not totally out of it. As they say that, they're being dropped again. It's USA first, Korea in second place. And now back in third. Good change there from Daniel for the Americans and uh, Apollo Ono. It is handing over now. The Italians are almost a collision there. A very powerful change from the Italian team, but uh, Rusty Smith still holding on out in front for the American team. It's Green looks to go through, and down he goes. And he takes out the Australian. But the Americans clearly out in front. It was the Italian, I think, he yes, took out was. the Australians in, uh, in second. second place there now. But the Korean definitely took out the Italians. And that is devastating. The Italians are complaining, and maybe the race is going to have to be stopped. But they won't stop the race, but what could happen is the Italians could get a bye through. Oh, there's an injury. The race is being stopped. Oh, dear, this looks bad. That's Ryong Min, who's gone down, and he looks in a bad state. It looked like it was his fault. They have to say, yes, he lost his footing there, and there goes the Italian. Ooh. And that was very nasty because not only has he got the impact from sliding into the boards, he's got the Italian coming in behind him. So there was, oh, he just got a, too much on the outside edge, didn't he? Oh, dear, what a nasty fall. That is horrific. Well, I really hope he's OK. He's such a talented skater. And there he was looking for a way through, but uh, the American just closing the door on him and... Oh, the impact there. Yes. Still able to get his arm up and do the tag, but uh, we wish him well. He's a tremendous competitor, ranked number two in the World Cup rankings at 1,000 metres, and that doesn't look good does not look good at all and you do have very serious injuries in the sport this once more how it happens it's just the lightest of touches but it can bring the most devastating of impact well it certainly can there have been some absolutely horrific injuries in this sport well Korea were disqualified the race was rerun and this is the result. It's the Americans, the benefit, benefactors of all this. In second place, the Italians, and it's the Americans of Biondo, Ono, Rusty Smith and Daniel Weinstein who took the victory. And the Italians not too bothered because they qualified in second place. The Australians miss out. But listen to that. The crowd here at the Salt Lake Ice Centre in raptures. America into the final. Well, it's such an exciting sport and uh, you have to feel for the Koreans because they gave it their best shot. The Australians not really in contention at all. 
but a strong American team here. And they've put down their mark. I tell you that Nicky Gooch in the, uh, the men's 1000 has failed to qualify. He fell, but Leon Flack has made it through. Qualified in second place. He's through to the quarterfinals of the 1000 on Saturday. We'll be back in a moment. So here we go then with the final. Genia Radanova of Bulgaria. Representing Korea, Choi Un Jung, who was absolutely devastating in both her heat and then again in her semi final. Representing the People's Republic of China, Yang Yang A. Yang Yang A. The dominant factor in women's short track over the last few years. Five times overall world champion. The uh, second of the two Koreans, Ko Gi Hyun. Representing the People's Republic of China, Yang Yang S. And here's Yang Yang S, triple silver medalist from Nagano. Can she go one better here? And uh, a rank outsider, but through to the final and will take her chance, Alana Kraus from Canada. So Radden over on the inside for Bulgaria, then Choi, then Yang Yang A, then Ko, then Yang Yang S, and on the outside, Kraus for Canada. The final of the women's 1500 meters. And straight away we can see this is going to be tactical, no world records here. And it's the Koreans though who may work as a pack. So too might the two Chinese, although they're deadly rivals, no relation. But at the moment, it's the Canadian leading out, Kraus. But this very much the calm before the storm. You can bet your bottom dollar things will get going in a minute, and here they do. The Koreans all work together, as will the Chinese. Seems that the slow pace would be sitting right into the hands of Joy. The other Korean, Ko, who leads out, Choi in third place. He's just starting to hot up a little bit now. Almost like a, a training procession. So it's Ko who leads, then it's Kraus, then Choi, then Yang Yang. And Radanova. Yes, keep your eye on Radanova as well. She's got a good turn of speed, very strong. Back in fifth at the moment. Halfway through, still no major break. The lead hasn't changed effectively, but now it looks as if it might. And guess who it is? Whoa! Down goes Yang. And it's Choi out in front now. So Choi in the lead. Ko in second place. The two Koreans working together. But not for much longer. Radanova in third. And Yang Yang in fourth. And it was Kraus, I think, that just uh, fell a lap or two ago. So Kraus out of it as well. And it's Yang Yang S who's on the outside. So it's Ko and Choi. Round the final bend. And would you believe it, Choi's been beaten. It's Ko who's taken it. There were no team orders in that race. <laughs> well, 
Choi thinks she's won. It was a fantastic effort from both of those skaters. There's no doubt about that. Korea first and second. Radanova did really well to get into third place. What well, a final full of incident, and they loved it. Well, confusion here because Ko on the computer has been given the win. But Choi thinks she's won it. But it looks like it is Choi who's taken the overall goal. And that is justice because she has been the dominant short tracker right the way through. And she has proved in the final that she's got the temperament to match. That's when Kraus went out. And here's the moment when Choi took the lead. Choi taking the lead here. Ko in second place. And there was Yang going out. That's Yang Yang S. Hard fall, feet first. And then there was another incident with uh, Kraus going down. But uh, that's again the fall of Yang Yang. The neck really part. takes a pounding, yeah. doesn't it? It sure does. And there's the fall of Alana Kraus. She saw it coming, able to get the arms out, but tough on the wrists. There's no runoff area here in short track speed skating. There's the official result, which has uh, Ko Ki Hyun as the winner. But you saw from the celebrations, Choi definitely thought she had the win. So we'll have to see confirmation for that. No doubt that Radanova got the bronze. But uh, confusion reigning here. But definitely a Korean winner. Speed skating, ladies, 1500 meter event. So a wonderful night for Korea, first and second. And it's Bulgaria who take the bronze. Congratulations to Ko and to Choi. A wonderful night for them, and once again they establish themselves. We'll be back on Sunday with the men's 1,000 and the women's 500. British Eurosport is the only channel with 24-hour uninterrupted coverage of the Winter Olympics. And this is the heat which features the first of the two Britons in this event, wearing number 330 on his helmet, Leon Flack, the 20-year-old from London. The four skaters for the fourth heat of the men's 1,000 metres get off at the second attempt and... In this heat is Leon Flack of Great Britain in third place. Also in this heat, Naoa Tamora of Japan, Martin Johansson of Sweden, and Kristin Drakowski of Poland. Tamora, 22 years of age, leads, and Leon Flack ranked at 17 in the world this season. Although last year he was only ranked as high as number 49. 10th overall in the European Championships in January. Oh, it's very tight. Flack tried to come through there and his route was blocked by the Swede, Johansson. Tamora leads. The Swedes in second place. Leon Flack is third. Two to qualify for the quarterfinals. Tamora, Johansson, and then Flack. The pole, Drovkowski is just behind. It's still Leon Flack in third place. Going around the outside, Tamora leads. And it's a big lead that Tamora's built up. The battle's going to be for second place, and Leon Flack is in second place. Little look over his shoulder to see how close the opposition was. And Leon Flack 
comes in in second place. So he qualifies for the quarterfinals with Tamora of Japan. The skaters come forward for the eighth and final heat in the men's 1,000 meters. And what a difficult draw this is for Nikki Gooch, 28-year-old British skater from Roehampton, because also in this heat are Jia Jun Li of China and the dark horse from Korea, Hun Su An, who's only 16 years of age and who's been put into this event by the Koreans as a real surprise. More experienced skaters were expected to start in this event, but they've given this boy his chance. He's only 16. Also here, Cornel Santo of Hungary. And Jia Jun Li, ranked three in the world this winter, has twice been crowned the world champion. The first Chinese skater to win that title. Took silver medal in the 1,000 meters at Nagano. Bronze in the relay. Nicky Gooch in third place. Ahead of him, the Korean and Lee of China. The double world champion, Jai Jun Lee, 26 years of age, goes into the lead. Tucked in behind is the 16-year-old Korean. And Nicky Gooch at 28 is in third place. But vastly experienced Nicky Gooch, Olympic bronze medal in the 500 meters at Lillehammer, but has been disqualified in the 1,000 meters at the last two Winter Olympic Games. Still in third place, trying to come through on the inside. It's very tight. Oh, Gooch is gone. He tried to come through, and in truth, there wasn't a gap. And it's left Ahn of Korea and Lee of China to come through and claim the qualification places. The 16-year-old wins that heat. Now there's Gooch, tucked into third place, thinks about a gap, and Ahn comes right across the front of him. Yet another disappointment for Nicky Gooch, and Matt Jasper will have his thoughts on what happened uh, in just a moment. Leon Flack battles on into the semi-finals and final, which take place on Saturday. Let's get the thoughts of the skaters themselves. It was a pretty tactical race you had to make there. Yeah, it was. Because um, the guy's really big, it's hard to overtake, so I had to sit him up. It took the first time I sit him up, it didn't quite work. But then I got him in the end, so it's good. When did you know you were going through? With about three or four laps to go, when I tried to pass him, I didn't quite do it, but I still felt good in myself, and I went behind him and relaxed, and then set him up again to pass him. Well, congratulations, Thank debut you. Olympics, you're through. How does that feel? It feels good. Hope to do good for Great Britain. You told us before though, that this mid-range race is probably not what you're going to concentrate on. The 1500 is what you've said will be your strongest event. Nick. Uh, in the past, in World Cups, definitely it's my strongest event. I mean, I'm a finalist in this event at the Olympics in '94. Uh, so, you know, I had hopes that I'd go for the rounds, but, um, yeah, it's, we'll just have to wait and see. We've got a 1,500 left, so we'll do our best there. It's a great non-contact sport, this sport of yours, isn't Definitely. it, Matt? Another disappointment for Nicky Gooch in, in the 1,000 metres. Was this one his responsibility, or was he carved up? Yeah, he got carved up. <laughs> <laughs> it, there was a, the, the Korean guy, it's the first time I've seen him skate. Um, he skates a very tight line, and he's very flexible, and sort of fluid on his feet and you know you can see him he, he's coming round he's behind the Chinese guy and he, he comes across and you can see Nicky coming and the Korean coach has told him that he's just got to go tight 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 it didn't actually hit Nick I don't think but he took his skates you know, he took his balance and definitely his line away I think I think he should have been disqualified as cross-tracking for that because that was just way too tight. But at that stage of the race, you're lying third, you know you've got to get into the first two. There must be a sort of hint of panic and the thought that you must take every opportunity. Surely a bit of responsibility with Nicky. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same as 94. The onus is on the overtaking skater to make the move cleanly. Nicky maybe <laughs> would have done, but the, Chinese, the Korean guy came across him so far, Nicky got nowhere to go anyway. So maybe a little bit of panic, but he's pretty experienced. He's getting on a bit now. It's happened before, and I'm sure it will happen again in your sport. The ideal situation is the one that Leon Flack found himself in. Three laps to go, and he was really cruising, everything under control. Very impressive on his first Olympics. Yeah, I was surprised how well Leon handled it. He got a really good draw there. I mean, the, the Polish guy did well to stay with him. It was a quick time overall, 
and Martin Johansson is a massive guy, he, his arms and legs everywhere. So Leon just did really well, bided his time, waited, was relaxed. I don't think he was feeling as fresh at the end as he made out, but a 128 winning time, maybe a 130 for Leon. He did really, really well. Said he felt he had it in the bag with three laps to go. What kind of character is he? He's been compared a little bit to, to Wilf O'Reilly, who did so much for the development of your sport. Yeah, I mean, Leon came from a, a roller speed background, and he's a, it sounds like he's a real character there. And he's brought that with him, and he's a, he's a big character in the country, and, you know, internationally. He's a little bit unpredictable, which is his strongest point. I mean, I skate against him, and I don't know what the hell he's going to do. <laughs> so, I mean, how is anybody else going to beat him? So maybe Saturday, next Thursday, he can go out there and win as a medal. Do you get quite a few converts to your sport from, from roller skating? Yeah, I mean, the Apollo Ono, the American guy who's doing really well at the moment, he, he started in roller speed in line. So we get a few, Joanna Williams started that way, or I think she, was, she combined the two. And you can actually tell in the way they skate, yeah. Joanna and Leon do skate similarly. Yeah, all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> well, the first short track medals were decided in the women's 1500 metres, featured two British athletes. We'll see Sarah Lindsay in just a moment, but in heat one, it was Joanna Williams, and she was wearing the British colours red and blue. Well, there's supposed to be no bodily contact. There's supposed to be no impeding of other competitors, but it does happen. No great pace at the start of the race. Joanna Williams is currently ranked the eighth best in the world overall. Only Yang S. Yang of China, who's in this heat, is ranked higher than her. So on paper, at least, Joanna should come through this opening heat to the semi-finals. Joanna, now 20 years of age, seventh at this distance on the World Cup circuit this winter, winner of two silver medals at the European Championships in January. Kutz of Germany is 24, she's a border guard. Pace beginning to pick up. These skaters are on a, a razor's edge. It's five in contention now for three places. Yang S. Yang, who's 24. She's known as Yang S. Yang because there's another Chinese competitor in the short track who's also called Yang Yang, although they're not related. One's called Yang A, one's called Yang S to differentiate between them. It's Yang S. Yang who leads. And they're benching up tight. Joanna's in fourth place. Three laps to go, the pace is beginning to wind up. China's still in the lead. Joanna is in fourth place. She's gonna have to make a move eventually. Two laps to go, still Yang S. Yang dominates this opening heat and there's a danger here that Joanna Williams might get dropped. She's losing pace with the front three. Amy Peterson from Minnesota, the skater from the United States, is there. And disappointingly, Joanna Williams of Great Britain does not come through that opening heat. Sarah Lindsay, second from the right, Ready? as you look. On her inside, Katia Zinni of Italy. Sarah Lindsay, second. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Chicago. Bouvier of France is in this heat. Chikag Tanaka of Japan. Yulia Pavlovich of Belarus. And Olga Danilov of Israel. Three to qualify. In the lead is Zinni of Italy, 20 years of age, one of the two Zinni sisters who competing in short track speed skating. Sarah Lindsay in second place, the 21-year-old from Kingston on Thames, although she now lives and trains in Nottingham, the nationalised centre. 
Bouvier goes on the outside of Lindsay to go into the lead. Just behind them, Tanaka of Japan. It's France, Great Britain, and Japan. Then Italy. Three places at stake in the semi finals. Can Sarah Lindsay be a representative for Great Britain? Well, Sarah Lindsay was fifth in the European Championships over 500 metres in January. She has a world ranking at 500 metres of eight. She's a good athlete. But this is a. Oh, there's another spell, and two of them have gone. So it's only three from four now. Sarah Lindsay's back on her feet. Katia Zinni is struggling. She's still down. But uh, Sarah Lindsay's doing her best here to rejoin the race. She's lost a whole lap and a half now, but there's always a possibility that somebody may fall in front of her. Tanaka of Japan leads, and they're lapping Sarah Lindsay for the second time. Tanaka wins it, Bouvier is second, and it's Olga Danilov of Israel who is the surprise third qualifier from that heat. But what a disappointment for Sarah Lindsay, and what happened? Well, it was at the back of the field, and it was difficult to see. But Britain's two competitors in the ladies' 1500 meters have both been eliminated in the heat. Yes, it was disappointing. We'll hear Matt's thoughts in just a moment. But let's hear from the uh, two British competitors. First of all, Sarah Lindsay. Joe, Sarah, first taste of Olympic competition, not quite as sweet as you had hoped it would be. First of all, Sarah, you said before you liked the rough and tumble, you got it there. Yeah, but unfortunately it didn't go in my favour today. I and mean, the other girl uh, fell over and took my skates out from underneath me. There's not a lot you can do about it. It's our sport, I'm afraid. It is. Joe, your mum and dad, and I believe your family, were all there watching you. What do you feel that you've learned for the next couple of events? Um, I think I need to go home and work out what went wrong, decide what to do with training. We've got a few days now between the next competitions, so I've got plenty of time to sort things out for the next distance. Well, they certainly have, and we say disappointing, but I suppose first Olympic experience for, for both uh, girls, Matt, so I suppose we couldn't have expected too much. No, I mean, Joe and Sarah both skated really, really well all year. I think they went in with some very high expectations of themselves. They both performed very well. I mean, Sarah fell, I think Sarah fell on her own, to be honest. Um, when she looks at it, when she gets home, there was the presence of Zini on the outside and a mm -hmm. few bits and bobs. And Joe maybe just ran out of steam well, we, with attention. You can just have a closer look at, uh, at Sarah's fall, see what you can pick yeah, up. Zini was, Zini was on the outside of her, she, she moved up. Sarah would have known that. If you watch her left skate, she just rocks forward a little bit more. She's a clip, she goes down her hips way out of place, which was moving her weight to the outside. The, from there, you can't really see a great deal of contact, but her left skate goes away mm. as the right comes through. And the, I mean, obviously, there's contact there because they've fallen. Mm -hmm. it's disappointing. It was just. A slight technical hitch, mm. and now she's cost her a place in the semis. Will she be able to pick herself up? Is she that sort of yeah. competitor? Yeah, the, you know, the support staff, Mark and, and Rory and Stuart will be looking mm. after her. And having Nikki there, she lives with Nikki for, for a while, so Nikki will be there to support her. Mm -hmm. It's probably not a best distance, so maybe for the next few days for the five, she can really work on it and concentrate on that. Now that's out of the way. For Joe, it was probably a best distance overall, but she's. Joe will pick herself up as well. And what about that at the end? Because once you lose pace, I suppose, with the leaders, then that's your history, are you? For Joe, yeah. I mean, I think it was about a lap and a half. She just closed up on Amy Peterson there, and she's going to have a real job getting past Amy. She's mm -hmm. quite a big girl, um, and she's very, very experienced. So you said that with a, with a nice <laughs> smile. <laughs> I think you got away with it, Matt. <laughs> yeah. um, and that was it. That was Joe's chance, maybe coming out of that bend, mm -hmm. that would have been her chance, but she, she went in a little bit too tight, and that just probably cost her the race. We've just got to be a bit more aggressive, and we get the old elbows out a bit more. You can't do that. 
magic. Everyone else does that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on, there was an actual a world record set in the semi-finals. That was set by Yun Chiang Chow of uh, South Korea. We can now see the final, but this wasn't about speed. This race was more about tactics. This the race to decide the gold, silver and bronze medals. And are China going to win a Winter Olympic gold medal for the first time? Represented in the final by their two skaters, Yang A. Yang and Yang S. Yang, not related and given those initials to differentiate between them. And the surprise in the final, Alana Krauss of Canada, who will get all the local support. It's the final of the ladies' 1500 meters. Two skaters from China, two from Korea, Radanova from Bulgaria, Kraus from Canada. 13 and a half laps to decide gold, silver, and bronze medals. And can China finally win an Olympic winter gold medal? Kraus of Canada who leads. The rest of the field strung out behind her. And it's the young Koreans who decide to put in the early injection of pace. <laughs> Gi Hyun Ko, the 15-year-old, the younger of the two Koreans, leading ahead of Alana Kraus of Canada. Tucked in behind is Yun Hyun Choi the second of the two teenage Koreans, the two Chinese skaters, Yang A. Yang and Yang S. Yang, content at the moment to sit at the back. So it's the youngest competitor, 15-year-old from Seoul, who won two World Cup 1500 meters races this winter, who's emerged almost from nowhere, number 174, Ranked six in the world this winter, who leads ahead of Alana Kraus of Canada. Choi is second, and Yang A. Yang at the moment is at the back of the field. Now the second of the Koreans moves forward, and that's an opportunity. Oh, somebody's gone! One of the Chinese skaters has gone. I'm not sure at the moment which one it is. Korea lead. Korea in second place. Radanova's in third. And now there's only four left. And there's only one Chinese skater who can do anything here now, and it's Yang A. Yang. Yang S. Yang has gone. Yang A. Yang, the five times world champion, is at the back. Red, red and over's ahead of her. The two teenage Koreans are in front. And China have got it all to do. There's no way through there. And there's not going to be a gold medal here for China. It's Korea. Ko of Korea, the 15 year old has won the gold medal. Poor old Tony, they're struggling with his Yang Yangs, but I think we got there in the end. But uh, the youngest winner of an Olympic individual short track medal, um, Ko, but uh, you think a bit of a surprise that the 15-year-old won it? Yeah, she led a lot of the early laps. Um, I would have thought Big John, as we call him, the Korean coach, <laughs> probably set her out there to, to pull the work for Choi. Um, Choi went by with about five to go and that was her bid for the gold medal and Ko just got her with a lap to go. It just shows what depth they have there though. It's just, it is very, very scary. So what's happened with the Chinese because they, they, they sort of failed it in Nagano and, and, and now failing here? Surprise? Yeah, I thought Yang Yang would be a little bit faster on her feet than mm -hmm. she has been. She's not looked good all year. I think she had a performance in Bulgaria which was pretty good. Um, but she's not looked on par with the Koreans. I think the Koreans are just better at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And, and finally, Matt, what, what can we expect from the Olympics as far as the British goes, realistically, the British competitors? In the men, I'd mm -hmm. like Nicky to be able to pick himself up, get into it and be his old self. Um, it can get, he can do very well. He, you know, he may not get out there and win the medal without a little bit of luck. I think Leon has got the ability to go out there and win a medal. Mm -hmm. I think I've always I thought that for the last couple of years. It's just whether he can apply himself for that short space of time mm -hmm. to go out there and do it. Same with the girls. I mean, Sarah in the 500, Joe in the 1000 especially. 
got a very good chance if they play the cards right and maybe get a little bit of a break. Yeah, and a bit aggressive as Steve. Oh, yeah, get the elbows out. <laughs> we will hang on to whatever hope you can provide. <laughs> Thanks very much Thanks, indeed, Matt. Matt. Incidentally, we were watching the uh, women's combined. All the runners have now gone, and Britain's Chemi Alcott is placed 12th after the two slalom runs, a very creditable 12th.